G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. I thought for this video I wanted to talk about how I've seen the evolution of networking since I was introduced to networking in about 1995-96, I think it was, about 22 something years ago now. And the fact that we've gone, or that I've gone from a 10 base T network to what I'm seeing now of 100 gigabit networking. Phenomenal speeds. For the purpose of this demonstration, now I showed you this in the Thursday promo video. This is the switch I've borrowed from my friend at his computer business. This is from uh, Alloy, uh, 24 port, PoE gigabit unmanaged switch. We're gonna look at it from an RJ45 point of view only. I wanna tell you about the networking that I started out with to what I've got today to the reason why I can't go 10 or 100 gigabit networking. I was introduced to networking, as I said, I think it was about 19, somewhere in the mid 90s, via serial cable, simple, two computers linked together, and infrared, a very basic form of networking to share files and or play games. Some people have over the years have debated me on whether serial com was a network. And as far as I'm concerned, if you connect two computers together, it is a network of computers. Two or more computers connected together, as far as I'm concerned, as I said, is a network. Sharing resources, files, whatever you want to call it. I was also introduced at the time to the 10 base T networking infrastructure. As you know, I've been borrowing a friend's 10 base T switch here at home, and I look on it, I look back on it now and think, how did we do anything on 10 base T? And then I realized back then, files were slightly smaller. Game networking was slightly smaller as well. Trying to do anything on 10 meg today, well, if you're a network troubleshooter and you're trying to find a problem, a 10 meg switch is only going to de delay the inevitable of finding the failure. It's just going to take longer to find it. In about, what was it? The late 90s, 1999, 100 megabit ethernet. Boy, oh boy, was that a whole pile of fun. Now, it must have been 1998, 100 megabit Ethernet. Man, f transferring files, playing games on local area networks through TCP IP, unbelievably quick. No lag, it was just, it was phenomenal. It was great fun. And then gigabit hit. And that put a rocket through the business and the domestic computer community. All of a sudden, you've got this great ability to send files from one computer to another in record time. If you started out in gigabit networking and you looked back at people who used to use 10 megabit or 10 base T, you'd be going, oh my God, how did you guys do anything in 10 base? That would be like super slow. Back then, 10 base at that time was quick for me. It was a hell of a lot quicker than serial far faster and more stable than infrared. A laptop I had at the time, a Toshiba laptop I had, had infrared uh, file transfer. I guess you could say a crude version of wireless. <laughs> a line of sight wireless connection. So, I've watched networking speeds just get phenomenally faster and now we're seeing 100 gigabit. What I haven't told you about was my foray into fiber channel networking. At about the time that Ethernet or RJ45 Cat5 networking was at about 100 meg, fiber channel was getting faster. One gig, two gig, four gig, eight gig, fiber speed of light fiber channel throttled obviously for 
sharing of files and bandwidth so that you weren't clobbering up a network switch or network router. But phenomenal fiber channel speeds. Um, you know, two gig in, two gig out type thing. I think at that stage it was, it was spoken to me as a TXRX format, a transmit receive type setup. With fiber channel, traditionally, you would have two plugs. You would have a TX, which is obviously your transmit plug, and you'd have an RX, which is your receive plug. So it went down two separate lines. In the very early days of mainframes, you had modem banks and fiber banks. Fiber for your high-speed networking and modem banks for external sources to come in. Now we're seeing 10 gig networking, 25 gig networking, 40 gig networking, 100 gig networking in InfiniBand. Whopping speeds. Now, what's preventing me here at home, right, going to 10 gig? Simple. My backbone operation, the e-server. Its PCI interface, as you know, is PCIX or PCI extended. Haven't found a 10 gig card. Secondly, every computer I have here only has a one gig card. Here's the thing. If I did go 10 gig on the e-server, the only thing I'm going to improve would be bandwidth coming from the e-server requests to and from. But my physical systems, as well as my virtual systems, are only going to go as fast as one gig. InfiniBand is now one of the standards that everyone's looking at. There's a video on YouTube I've seen of a, I think it's a university, getting a whole pile of Mac G5 towers and linking them all using InfiniBand to make a supercomputer. It's not the first time I've heard of PowerPC Mac G5s being used in a project like that. Networking has become massive. You now also, not only do you have LAN and WAN, but you now have MAN too, Metropolitan Access Networks. So you may have dark fiber links between, you know, so um, for example, you may have, say, head office in the central business district and then a few satellite offices around the city in the suburbs. And they're all linked by dark fiber or laid CAT5 with SCOE or fiber channel over ethernet. Metropolitan access networks. TV stations use them as well. Initially, a long, long time ago, and I've got to, I've, I've, if I get this wrong, I'm sorry, but I'm going for memory from when I was four. Was it DEC, Intel, and Xerox came up with a networking standard up to go up against the token ring system. Now, for those that don't understand or newbies into the system, token ring used coaxial cable as its backbone. Network cards often had a BNC plug on it. And token ring is exactly what it is. It's a ring. Okay? Data flowing in a ring. So, you'd have this coax cable and you'd have computers being punched into the central cabling. Okay? So in a business, you may have a whole pile of coax cable running all over the place. That was the backbone the backbone cabling for the network. And you have all these BNC coax plugs come flying off, get punched into the cable. Now what would happen, and this is how it was explained to me, and this makes it easy. You have computer A here and computer, say, F here. Right? So here's computer F, here's computer A. 
In an Ethernet network, it goes that way. In a token ring network, the data would actually flow around until it met here. So data goes around in a ring and you just pick and choose what you want. No computer was directly connected from a network point of view to another computer. So if, if you were sitting at a desk and there are two computers here, side by side, computer one to get to computer two would have to go around the ring. And then computer two would go back to computer one. So each computer went around in a ring. That was called token ring. I can't remember the other one though. There's token something, but the name escapes me at the moment. I dabbled in token ring networking and found it cumbersome. But that's just me. If I had the opportunity right now, and the other thing we're seeing too, and that's another thing, is Wi-Fi. Was it six gigahertz or something? Wi-Fi speed now? Or Sixty gigahertz? Stupidly fast connections. But do I or should I go to ten gig networking right now? No, not going to happen. Reason being, one, I don't believe or am yet to find a ten gig PCI X network card. Two. If I was to put 10 gig cards into the ESXi server and the main PC and the media PC upstairs and a few other things, is that going to improve anything? As long as I'm not accessing the e-server, probably. But everything I do goes through the e-server, so there's no point. Fibre. Fibre networking is expensive. Fibre channel is an expensive platform. Fibre leads are not cheap. In fact, fibre leads, in some cases, can be a, a exponentially more expensive than a bit of copper. The one thing that's improved copper speeds is the internal impedance within the copper wire. The more and more pure you're able to make copper, the less and less the internal resistance of that lead is. Therefore, the more you can put down it. A long time ago, if you tried to jam a 100 meg down a 10 meg copper lead, it would heat up. So if you can make the internal resistance of copper less and less and less, you can put more and more down it because the resistance isn't going to be as high, therefore the heat dissipation is going to be less. InfiniBand will probably end up being where a lot of your large enterprise businesses are heading, just because of its sheer speed throughput. You've got 100 gig networking coming through now too, which is just 100 gig. It's almost like that, really. You know, you, you, you want to pull a... Um, a file from a server in a building that's on 100 gig, the file's there like that. It's, you know, you, you copy and paste and, and it's there. It's just like you watch the copy bar just go. Thish. 100 gig networking will definitely be more for your WAN type or WLAN type setups anyway. Uh, businesses going to different states around your countries. Where do I see networking in the future? Stupidly fast, ridiculously fast. I mean, I've watched networking both when I started out and now just get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. I've watched Fiber Channel get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And as I said in the um, NAS and SAN video, a lot of SAN based storage architecture, so SAN servers, are Fiber Channel. In some cases, 64 gig fiber. Reason being is you want the data like that. And with businesses and industry needing to get their hands on their data faster from a remote server or even an internal file server, they don't want to wait for it. So networking has to get faster and faster and faster. The only way I would get to 10 gig networking 
would be to get a Sun server with a PCI Express bus in it that would replace the E4900. That is the only way I'd be able to get 10 gig networking here right now. Would be a, a you know, a new version of the E49. I haven't got the money to do that. So networking has evolved from when Xerox played around with it in the Alto to when I was introduced to networking at school, at my secondary school, to what I'm seeing in the industry now. And it is just, it's just an exponential growth. It's sort of, you could say it sort of sits there, it goes up, plateaus, goes up, plateaus, and then shoots straight up. Really, it's just phenomenal. So that's how I've seen networking from when I was introduced to it. And the one thing that I have done through my career, apart from being a hardware tech, tech and a network troubleshooter, is the ability to play with new networking standards and watch their speeds and set them up. 10 gig networking at home? Well, it's all right for file sharing, but it's not going to improve your internet connection. I've been asked many times before throughout my career, you know, especially when ADSL internet came to Australia. You know, people are like, you know, um, I've, I need a gigabit um, network card to improve my internet connection. Well, no, you don't. If your internet connection was 1.5 megabit down 256k up, a gigabit network card was going to do absolutely nothing for your internet connection because you were limited by your speed. But where gigabit does help, is in file sharing across multiple devices. But I've had arguments with people before saying, you know, I need a gigabit card because my internet's slow. Well, a gigabit card is not going to improve your internet. Your card is only going to get whatever your modem at the time is sending out. So if you've got a gigabit card on a megabit uh, modem, you're only going to have megabit networking. It wasn't long ago, um, a modem I had actually, believe it or not, was still only megabit. Before I got that lovely Belkin modem I had, my original modem was literally megabit. I had gigabit networking, but that did nothing for my internet connection because the front end to the outside world was megabit. Anyway, there we go. Evolution of networking as I've seen it through the years, where I think it's going. I presume somewhere down the track we will have basically real-time networking. You know, you want a file from a server 20 kilometres away, you'll have it like that. No waiting. One second transfer for, say, a 10 gig file. It's not that far away. It's not that far away, believe me. Here in Australia, well, our internet, as we all know, lags behind the world dramatically. But it won't be long before you'll be able to pull a 10 gig file like that, done, across a, 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 a wide local area network or a man network. It'll just, it'll just show up. It's not that far away when you think about it. Anyway, stick around. We'll, uh, we'll get out to the cabinet soon and get that uh, alloy switch. And the other thing I just wanted to show you too with this alloy switch, as I said, it is PLE. For those that don't understand um, what these are for, okay, and there's plenty of people who do, there's a lot of people who get concerned when putting these together. These are your switch links, SFP links. Now, what this allows you to do, for example, you may have, and I'm only doing this as an example, and believe it or not, I've seen this. You may have, say, four of these in a rack. Okay? 
these are your and and so you've got what have we got here 24 ports so you might have 96 units these are your high speed interconnects between each of these for example this one here could be in position 1 and your PDC is going into this plug here in front of my finger. These are the two high speed links that you use to connect the, the, these units together to give you the full gigabit bandwidth through all the units. But it can also be your fiber channel converters too. Now I've used these as high speed links between two boxes and I'm talking high speed links. So, the network, the evolution of networking as I've seen it throughout my career, and when I was first introduced, and as I said, stick around because I am going to get out of the cabinet very soon. We haven't been out of the cabinet for a while. I'm going to show you the changes that are pl planned for it. Anyway, stick around. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.